PitchMe, Technopole Startup Incubator, empowering founders as well as PitchMe podcasts. Welcome to PitchMe. My name is Tarma Virki and I'll be your host through the series. In this first episode to talk about pitching, I've invited to the studio Gleb, a friend who uh, was 10 years ago um, teaching me to pitch. Tell me, Gleb, you're still very much in the pitching world. Uh, how many pitches have you heard over the years? Thank you for having me. Uh, Tarma, we, we don't see each other enough, man. Uh, but to answer you, man, 12 years. 12 years for people who don't know is a really long time to do what I do. And specifically, listening to thousands and thousands of executives, scientists, researchers, engineers explain what they do in a short amount of time. So 40% of my work is companies raising money. So these headlines you might read on your publication, so-and-so raised this much. My job is to prepare founders for that. Another large chunk of my work is having corporate denizens, employees, project managers, I know, energy production companies, government institutions, is to do exactly this, to be able to explain what I do in a short amount of time, either internally or externally. That one is, well, salespeople going to major events like Hanover Mesa, uh, trade fairs, boat building fairs, defense industry, consumer goods, all that. But ultimately, I'm a guy who listens, asks a lot of questions, and helps people explain things in a short amount of time. That's basically it, man. But yeah, it's, it's getting there. 12 years is a long time, man. How do you define a good pitch? What makes a pitch um, perfect? All right, so two buckets at least. So fundraising, that in our investor pitching is one bucket. The second is when you are I don't know, selling B2B services, um, for some form of consultant service. That's a separate subject, right? So both I do, but in this context for fundraising, founders yeah. listening. And the third one is probably like looking for a wife or... Well, th there's or... better people for dating. I'm I am in no way a guideline for that. Um, that Sorry, one, but it's Sorry. a good one. Investment. No, no biggie, no biggie. I, I, if you're asking for a friend, quote quote, I'm happy to recommend somebody. But having said this, if we just stick to the fundraising bit, in the beginning, you have to understand that when you're raising money, you enter a funnel of a venture capital firm. So they might go through a thousand, three thousand pitches in a form of slides called pitch decks. They might listen to you at an event. Then you might come recommended through a portfolio company they already have and the CTO of that company. And so there, you're simply going from one meeting to the next. And the job of a pitch in this context is to get to the next meeting. Very similar to sales. But in the beginning, because it's still human beings dealing with other human beings, not AI yet fully, it's about trust. It's about, do I want to meet you again? Did you build enough rapport? Were you able to explain what the heck you do? Were you able to explain what's your background? Who are you? And did you were you able to just tell me why you do what you do, right? And if I have these who and the what and the why, and you go into a podcast or you go into a meeting and you get that covered, that sets you on the right path to learn this stuff. And the difference between an expert level performer and a newbie is that the expert level performers, they do these basics really, really well. Is it about performance or is it about content? No. You see, there's a thing which is like a fancy phrase called false dichotomy. In a nutshell, man, yes, you have to, you can, I call it basically writing and delivery. You do need to formulate what you're saying. You need to know what you're talking about both factually, so on a logical level wise, case studies, arguments, for instance, structure. But not am if you sound as if you're, I don't know, let's say a Finnish and Estonian executive who is made their money in the 90s and you still have this flat voice, then it's no matter how intelligent you are, it will be difficult to listen to you, plain and simple. And this is I put in the delivery bucket. So instead of separating the two, I would say, and what I say to the founders, they're intimately connected. Both delivery and this content, what you call, or writing it out, fleshing it out, have to be united in a dance. They have to work together to support each other. But know what you're talking about, know the facts, know the numbers. So if you're being grilled, for instance, by an associate analyst, you know the traction numbers. You know your go-to-market strategy, for instance. You basically know what the money is going to be used for and what goals to achieve. But if you're just there and like, I know, oh, just hello, my name is Johan, and I would like to present to you an exciting investment opportunity. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get bored, guys. I'm going to get really bored. 
what's the solution? Should I, you know, come to a pitch coach or I don't know, do do perform performance arts or maybe I mean in some cases I've advised teams to just switch the person pitching. Often in the founding team there could be a there could be a CTO who's actually a much better speaker. I'll give an example. I this CTO is a great example. There's a conference happening very soon called Latitude 59. In the last year's conference, two co-founders, so people who started the company, could not make it. One was somewhere in Germany, somewhere away. Another one had a completely different event. And the CTO had to pitch. And the CTO never pitched in his life. And so one of the co-founders happens to be a friend and said, Gleb, could you help us out? So I said, sure. And we had roughly like a week before the actual event. So this was a bit of an accelerated learning curve. And I loved working with the CTO. And for a simple reason, he used to be a pilot. So every time you board a plane, the guy in the cockpit, is he was that guy. And then he became a CTO later down the line. But because he was so disciplined, he understood value process, it was a pleasure working with him. He ended up presenting in front of hundreds and hundreds of people as part of the top five of Latitude 59's competition. They go to hundreds of people. And he was able to deliver a three-minute pitch with slides and answer questions under pressure. This was his first time. But to get there, we did quite a few jumps for hoops. And I put him into different events very quickly in an accelerated format. We wrote down a script. We were able to practice delivery. We did the basic grill in terms of Q&A. And listen, man, he delivered. He wasn't the world's most exceptional presenter, but he delivered. And that's how I approach it. I don't throw out a person immediately, like just because you happen to have technical background. I do work with you. But what's important is process coachability and your and the fact that you do you want to change do you want to learn and if the answer is yes and you're disciplined you will improve mm, that's a good good uh, lessons to everyone listening also so if you want to be on pitch me just uh, send your deck to found me at foundme.io and any key last points from you glab i do have one when you're on this podcast and you are a subject matter expert Ask yourself what you could give. Give them something. I'll give you an example. To help the founders understand how this venture capital game is played and how to pitch in this context, I wrote an article called The Anatomy of a Pitch. Now, it exploded. We have like 5,000 different people that checked out this article, but it's on medium.com. I picked up by an entrepreneur's handbook. Just open the link. Probably it's going to be somewhere you know, below in the description. But click on the link, read through it. It's like seven to 10 minutes long. There's a lot of pictures, makes it nice and clean. And it helps you understand how the game is played somewhat. Good. Thank you for joining us in the studio, Gleb. Hey, it was my pleasure. Good to see you.